Hello everybody and welcome to another Minecraft video. I'm, a, I'm just paused in single player commands right now because I didn't want the animals to come through my drowner. But anyway, this is my latest invention I've created in Minecraft. Um, it's kind of different from any other uh, mob drowner. I'm sure it can be used for hostile mobs, but I've only tested it with passive mobs, so I'm not sure if it'll work with hostiles or not, but I'm pretty sure it will. Um, so basically, I've been studying Minecraft water a lot lately, and uh, Ethos Lab's tutorial on water in general helped a lot. But I did a little more extensive research on Reddit and stuff like that. And I studied um, stream coupling. Stream coupling is this strange thing that um, it's where if uh, a horizontally uh, positioned stream of water meets a vertical stream of water, the vertical stream of water will actually alter itself in a certain stream pattern to match the, um, to match the vertical stream, or the horizontal stream. So basically if they meet, depending on the air blocks that are around it, or the air blocks that are under um, the under the vertical stream, it'll meet with the horizontal stream and cause the horizontal stream to come up, uh, causing a current upwards to occur. And I figured out that with pistons, previously you couldn't do this, but with pistons you can actually um, control stream coupling. So you can actually reverse the, um, the direction of the upward stream, which I'm going to show you right now. So let me unpause. And as you can see, I have all these mobs here. And this uh, system is called the pacifier. Let me turn the volume, let me turn the volume down. This system I've created here is called the pacifier. It's basically, it uses stream coupling and pistons to make it so that you can control mobs in many different ways. Let me turn it down. Sorry about that. Anyway, so, I have a, a couple of controls for the pacifier. One is to drop loot, because you can control the drop loot via... I'm no clipping with, with single player commands just so you can get a better view. But I've used pistons over here to control these half slabs which edit the air blocks under this vertical stream of water. And depending on whether the air blocks under this vertical stream or not, the stream coupling will change the direction of this upward stream from down to up. So therefore, right now it's in housekeeping mode. Housekeeping mode on the lever, see it says down, housekeeping mode will cause the uh, stream couple to stream downwards, so mobs cannot go into the drowning area and they will just simply collect here. All the loot that has gotten caught here, because occasionally the odd loot out will get stuck right here, and it will um, it will flow down here in housekeeping mode. And if the mobs gather up too much, if there's too many mobs, they'll eventually push themselves down and die, so there's no clogging. The, uh, basically, the, um, the benefits to using this system is it's very, very compact, depending on how many um, redstone things you want to add. But just its base form, its base format is very compact. It's just this glass structure. You don't have to use mob separators. It works with all mobs, even chickens, cows, pigs, everything. And it, uh, another benefit is that it, it is completely uncloggable. Um, basically, it uses uh, something like a queuing system. I put these two blocks here to make sort of a queuing system. So, as you can see, let's turn it into regular mode. When it's in regular mode, as you can see, this vertical stream has transferred upwards, as you can see. So the pigs will now go into the queue. This is what I like to call the queue. It's these two blocks here that, um, I can just put signs here, but I choose to put these two blocks here because the pigs stay here. And then when the next mob comes down from the passive mob system here, it will push the two pigs in and start a new queue, basically causing there to be no clogging, like that. Because it, it puts them in a line and prevents them from being clogged up in there. So that's basically how it works, and it uses stream coupling with these half slabs and pistons. So when you pull the lever like this, it transfers the direction of the stream over here, and uses more pistons to open this lava, which, uh, which kills the items and any mobs that start to, when the thing gets clogged, any mobs that push themselves downwards will get killed. So basically that's how it works. It uh, brings the mobs up here, drowns them like this, and then drops the loot onto, the, drops the loot onto these pads. Then I've wired in another button, so when you press this button, it opens the two pistons very quickly and drops the loot down here. They fall through the water and then go into this collection stream. The stream leads over here, down into here, and then down to a collection point. And now we're going to go to this collection point. Over here is the collection point. And I've also wired this button here, it's basically a, basically a wire, using a vertical redstone mechanism 
to drop the loot to here. So basically, that is the pacifier. It uses uh, stream coupling. Uh, you can, I've learned how to control stream couples with pistons, like this. And you can control the stream coupling, and I've created a lava pool for items to flow into. So, I'm eventually going to wire up this second piston so they both close, but right now it doesn't affect anything. So yeah, it uses a queuing system, kills all the mobs, you get 100% of the loot, except for the odd one out that hits there. I shouldn't have said 100%. But uh, turning it into housekeeping mode will kill any mobs that start clogging it while it's in housekeeping. It'll dissolve them in the lava. And while this is in regular mode, it's totally uncloggable because it uses the queuing system. Alright, last but not least, I'm going to show you the redstone mechanism. It's actually fairly complicated. Um, so I have basically three buttons that are wiring into the system. And I have a several inverters here. Basically I have the lever and then the two buttons. The lever wires into here. And so the lever controls these two things. So basically, this stream over here leads to the pistons that open up the lava. So I don't want the lava to open up when I press the button, so because I don't want any mobs to die while I'm releasing the loot. So yeah. So the button, as you can see, doesn't connect to this inverter. This inverter controls the lava flow. So I only want the lever to control the lava flow. So that's how that works. So. The lever comes over here, it goes over this way under here, turns off the inverter, therefore closing these two pistons using a little under mechanism, which is, which is kind of difficult to figure out, but you get the idea. It, uses, it closes these two pistons, heads over this way, goes under here, and uses the same mechanism to close these two, um, to open these two pistons. So therefore, it opens the pistons and drops these, this loot. And yeah, that's how that works. So the lever also comes up here, goes around here, turns off this inverter, heads down here, and opens the two pistons with the lava. So that's how that works. So now we've got the button. The button's over here, and it controls this, and just flashes this for a second. Since this is a backwards inverter, it doesn't let the current through here. And it heads right through here and just flashes this for a second, so therefore it opens the pistons for a moment. Reversing the uh, stream couple, but not enough to cause any mob redirections, just because it's just a short amount for the button. All right, now we've got the second. Uh, now we've got the third button, which is the most complicated. Down here, when you press this button, it uses a small redstone stream next to here, goes under in here, under the inside this chandelier, heads under in here, brings the current up here, and then uses a vertical redstone mechanism up to here, up under here, flashes this torch, goes over here comes around, and then through this forwards repeater, and then back toward where the normal button goes. Normal, the normal button flashes this torch, so this one, in turn, flashes that normal torch. So, the last thing we're going to do is show you the loot button in action. Right now the mob system isn't working very well because of the 1.6 update. You don't get very many passive mobs, but we've, ha we've got a couple steak we've got a couple pork chops up there. Press the button, and then, wait and we'll see the loot come through. At times when the mobs are, when there's a ton of mobs up there like it was a while ago, you just get tons of loot on the press of that button. But yeah, that's how it works. So the pacifier, a little overview, uh, uses a queuing system, uh, uses a stream couple with, that's controlled with pistons, it's totally uncloggable, it's very compact, and that's about it. And it has, it has redstone control and you can choose on how compact it is just by uh, how much redstone control you add, and I love lots of control, similar to how Etho has said. The only real disadvantage to, th to this is that there is a, a small item loss, which you can clear up with the housekeeping so it doesn't uh, lag anything or stop any mobs from coming through. And the second one is that you can't use a mob sorter. This is meant to be compact and no, and no, and no clogging. Compact and no clogging is the point of the pacifier. And there's, no, there's not going to be any sorting here, it's just raw loot. That's been the video on the pacifier. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.